Hi, today I want to have a conversation about a couple diagrams. First of all, we're going to look at the hierarchical network design diagram, and then we're going to have a look at some different architecture diagrams. So this is your standard hierarchical network design. What we do is we, when we design a network, we want to break it up into three separate sections in order to make it more manageable. The three sections are the access layer, and this is the layer of your network that's going to attach to all your end user devices. We've got the distribution layer, which is the middleman, and then we've got the core layer, which has all of your, um, your, your fast-paced routers and layer three switches. Sometimes you'll see the core layer and the distribution layer collapsed into one on smaller networks. So this is the hierarchical network design. The other types of diagrams I wanted to look at today are some different types of architecture models. We've actually got three different types we're going to talk about, but this is the first one here. This is called the Cisco Enterprise Architecture Model. So this would be typical for, for a campus scenario. If you picture a campus, like a university campus, for example, you've got various buildings that, that all need to communicate to one another, but they're separated by short distances. So here we've got the enterprise campus module. We've also, also got the enterprise edge module, the service provider edge, and then the remote module. Now all these modules do is they group like things together. So here we've got the enterprise campus module and it's a network within itself. So you've got the building access layer, the building distribution layer, and the campus core layer. This is made up of the hierarchical network that we saw in the last slide. Everything in this module is what's happening on campus. So you've got your typical hierarchical network as well as a server form, farm and data center. Now this module is going to connect to what we call the enterprise edge. Think of the enterprise edge as the edge of your campus. So you've got devices on the edge of your campus that are going to communicate with things outside of the campus. So it's that edge, it's that, um, that middleman again that's, that's going to relay the information. So what you'll see in the enterprise edge is you've got modules or sub-modules like e-commerce. Any type of e-commerce transaction that occurs, so um, paying for tuition or if you've got merchandise that you're selling, those transactions need to interface with the enterprise campus but also to the outside world, to the internet. So any e-commerce activities happen on the enterprise edge. Any internet connectivity. The internet connectivity connects your enterprise campus, so stuff on campus, with a service provider, right? So your internet connectivity is going out to your ISP, maybe a different ISP, PSTN, that's your public switch tele telephone network. Uh, remote access and VPN, so anybody who's trying to gain access into the campus computers remotely need to go through the enterprise edge. And you've also got your WAN site to site VPN submodule. So connecting, connecting any wide area networks together. All of those things happen on the enterprise edge. So the enterprise edge is your middleman that connects your enterprise cap, campus with your service provider edge. And then your service provider edge extends any external services out to remote devices. So this busy diagram here is known as the Cisco Enterprise Architecture Model and it is used quite frequently. So within our IT environments, we see a number of different challenges. Here's a small list of challenges that we're going to solve through various architectures. Um, the on-trend challenges of the time are uh, BYOD, bring your own device. You've got people bringing iPads and their own phones and, and different types of devices to work and you need to be able to make those devices work on your infrastructure. Online collaboration, video communication, cloud computing, these are all things that are, are very current right now. So how do we deal with these? Well, we've got three different architectures that we can use to deal with them. We've got one called a borderless network architecture, a collabor collaboration architecture, and data center virtualization architecture. Here's your first one we're gonna look at, the borderless network architecture. 
And what this does is this accommodates the whole bring your own device fiasco. Here is an example of the collaboration architecture. So we want to promote people being able to work together. We want people to be collaborative. We want them to do um, group activities, right? So in order to accommodate this, we use this three-tiered architecture that promotes collaboration. And finally, we've got the data center virtualization architecture. It again is a three-module architecture that will allow the accommodation of, of um, virtualization and, and large data centers.